Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be implementing a stack using an array. So to get started, we're going to create a class called stack array implementation, and it's going to contain a couple of private data members. The first one in size is going to be the size of the array that we're going to create. Stack array is going to be the actual array. And in top is going to be the index of the top of the stack, or you could think of it as the position of the top of the stack. We're also going to have a method called resize. And this is just in case our stack becomes full. If our stack becomes full, we're going to have to resize the array. And we'll get more into the resize method later on within this tutorial. Now from here, let's move on to our one argument constructor. So we're just going to pass in the size. And now here, we're going to set the size equal to the size being passed in. And the next line, we're going to actually create the array or our stack based on the size. So let's say that the size being passed in is four. So we'll create an array of size four. And the top, we're going to set to minus one. Now it's going to be set to minus one initially. And that's because we have no top of the stack. Our stack right now is empty. So to get started, we're going to have our push method. Our push method is not going to return anything, so it's void. And we're going to be passing in the data that we want to push on top of the stack. So the very first thing that we need to do is to check to see if the stack is full or not. Well, one way to do that is to see if the top is equal to size minus one. Now, remember, the size is the size of the array. And the last index of that array is always size minus one. So that will give us index three. So if the top is equal to index three, that means we have no more room to push on top of the stack. So we're going to call our resize method. After that, we're just going to push on top of the stack. So let's say I want to push one on top of the stack. Well, we're going to pre increment top. So right now top is equal to minus one. If we pre increment it, that will give us top is equal to zero. Then we hit get stack sub top, which is tax sub zero. And we assign that the data that we want to push on top of the stack. All right. So now let's give another example. Let's say I want to push two on top of the stack now. So first we check to see if our stack has any more space. So is top equal to three? No, it's not. So we skip the if statement. Now we pre increment top. So top right now is at index zero and that gives us top is equal to one. So now we say stack sub one is going to be assigned data. So we effectively pushed two on top of the stack. So now let's move on to the pop method. So the pop method is going to return whatever's on top of the stack. And our case is going to be of type int. So if the first thing we should do is probably check to see whether or not the stack is empty or not. And remember in our one argument constructor, we initialize the top to equal minus one. So if the top is equal to minus one, we're just going to print out that the stack is empty and we're going to return minus one. Otherwise, we're just going to return whatever is at the top and then post decrement top. So now let's take a look at the pop method in action. So first, if I was to call pop now, it's going to check to see whether or not the stack is empty. So is top equal to minus one? In this case, it's not. So we skip our if condition. So now we go down here. So now what we're going to do is return whatever is that stack array sub top. So that's going to return two. And since it's a post decrement, after we return two, top is going to be decremented. So now top is going to be equal to zero. And likewise, if I was to call pop one more time, is top equal to minus one? It's not, so it's not empty. Return whatever is at stack array sub top. So then it's going to return one, and then we're going to post decrement top. So now top is going to be at minus one. So now you might be wondering, well, our stack or our array still has the values of one and two in it. So does that really matter? And the answer is no. So let's take a look at the push method one more time. So let's say I want to push the number three on top of the stack. So I'm going to call the push method. 
is top equal to size minus one? It's not, so we're gonna skip the resize method. But now look what happens. I'm gonna pre-increment top. So top right now is at minus one. We pre-increment it till top is at zero. So now stack sub zero is gonna be assigned data and that will override one that was there previously. So now if I was to call pop, remember pop always pops whatever is on top of the stack. We check to see whether or not the stack is empty or not. It's not, so we skip the if statement. Then we return stack array sub top. So top right now is at index zero. So we return three and then we post decrement. So then top becomes minus one. So it pretty much is irrelevant if the old data is still there because once you push on top of the stack it's gonna override the old data that was there previously. So now let's take a look at our resize method. Now our resize method is invoked whenever our stack is full. So first int temp size is gonna be essentially double the previous size of our old array. Next, we're gonna create the new array that's double the size. Now we're gonna to go to the for loop and this is just gonna copy all the data from our old array and put it in the new array. Then we're gonna delete our old array and set stack array equal to the new array that we just created. And then size is gonna be updated to the new size. And last but not least, before we go, we're gonna have to need a destructor for our stack array class. And that's because we're dynamically creating an array. So all we need to do is just delete our array.